Hey, what's up guys, Six Somebody here. Another week, another episode. Orlando Pirates are out of the CAF Champions League. <laughs> Let's go. That's how it goes. They keep asking about the best when they know it's me. Okay. Asking about the rest when they know it's me. Straight in, I guess. You know it's me. Loads of football this past weekend, but the big talking point is the fact that Orlando Pirates crashing out of the CAF Champions League. They got knocked out by Dwayne Galaxy on penalties. Yeah. Aside that, Orlando Pirates were stronger then, you know, aside that Orlando Pirates should have beat. If we're being honest, it was embarrassing. I called it a disaster this past weekend. And the crazy thing about it leading up to the CAF Champions League games and the Confederations Cup games is that Sunhounds played midweek. And they threw to the group stages. Super Sport United played midweek. And they threw to the group stages of the Confederations Cup. Sakuna so United, same thing with them. They played midweek and they progressed through. The only team that had rest and didn't play are knocked out. Can you imagine shellering a girl for over a year? And then when you become in the relationship, after one month it ends. So Orlando Pirates did all that work to get into the CAF Champions League only to get knocked out at the pre-stages. I mean, wow. And I think what we saw this past weekend was karma. Karma to Orlando Pirates because they're playing like they think that they have arrived. They get hyped and they believed in the hype. They got complacent and now they're being humbled because even with their star players, we saw another performance in 90 minutes where they were absent. Where were they? Where was the pastor? He was not there. Saleng didn't even make it off the bench. I asked you guys the same thing. What do you think is going on with the Orlando Pirates? And this is what you guys said. Tabiso says their minds is on playing Mamlodi Sundowns. That's the most important thing to them. I actually never thought about it. Maybe they are thinking too much about the MT8 final. Second one is Demar says playing against Mamlodi Sundowns killed their momentum. He's referring to being in the league. Sundowns is a big team. You can't match them pound for pound. Hmm. Maybe Orlando Price is thinking about Sundowns a little bit too much. Vuyo says the coaching staff is not managing the rotation well. And I think that is true because when you look at how Mamelo Sundowns does it, it seems seamless. But Jose is not trusting the other players and having to overplay the starting 11 all the time. Smanga says other teams have figured out how Orlando Pirates plays. It's too easy to play against them. They don't have a plan B. And then Lee says they become too cocky and they thought the results were going to land on their lap. I believe so too. I do believe Orlando Pirates have become cocky. They better wake up very quickly because we are running towards the empty net final. And if I have to be honest, they are not going to defend their crown against Mamlodi Sundowns. The silky, the tricky, the classy Mark Mambella is in the house. And I asked him a simple question. With Orlando Pirates losing form... Can South African players play every four days? Guys, on today's show, massive guest, a massive guest, a guest that I respect over a decade on the playing field. And listen to the CV of clubs, Bloemfontein Celtic, Orlando Pirates, Cheaper United, Cape Town Spurs, Super Sport United, Cape Town City, and a stint in Sweden. Mark Mambella, welcome to the show. My brother, um, thank you for having me. Um, good afternoon, good evening. Yeah, it, man. Every time I, every time I think of Mark Mambella, I mean, I remember the tricks, the way you were able to just beat players with ease. I mean, what what are you up to right now? Yeah, uh, now um, mainly I'm busy with, busy with coaching now. Uh, yeah. I'm a youth development coach at uh, Cape Town City. I am the lead coach for the under 18s. Um, I also do. Um, initial um, recruitment in the club. Um, so mainly that's that's what I've been busy with. Oh, man, amazing. And I know you guys are doing phenomenal work there, leading in the youngsters within Cape Town City as well. I have to ask you this every time someone mentions Mark Mambella, they mention Bloomberg Celtic. I have to <laughs> ask, man, what is it that Bloomberg Celtic did right that maybe other clubs in today's time can learn to sort of bring fans to the stadium and have that unity with the fans? I think it's culture. Um, I think these, these, this is like a, a fundamental in, in football and in life as well. And also when you look at clubs in Europe and I would say mainly in England, 
that if you go to uh, Nottingham, everyone there is, is, is Nottingham uh, um, supporters. So mm. um, I think whoever built that culture did a great job, you know, and um, I think also um, it's something that many clubs can, can also learn from because um, you cannot separate Bloemfontein Celtics from people from Bloemfontein, you know. Mm. Uh, it's, it's everything to them. I remember when, when we used to play, on Sundays, um, we were camping at, at, at some Protea hotel in, in, in town. And when you go for a walk in the morning after breakfast, everyone in the street that you see is wearing a green, a Plumfontein Celtic shirt. Um, the staff in the hotel are wearing a Plumfontein Celtic staff. So, um, colors as well. So, when you walk or when you drive to the stadium, the, the, the city is green, you know. Mm. And I'm not talking about something that is... Um, there's there's um, an announcement that is made that tomorrow we are wearing green. No, it's part of of, of mm. the city. It's part of culture of the city as well. That that they'll always have my respect, the Celtic supporters, because they always remain consistent. The next question I wanted to ask was: You were a player not so long ago. Now you've gone into coaching. You'd be able to give me more information regarding this. So I look at a club like Orlando Pirates. They started very strong, very well. Then suddenly the game started to pile up. Calf this MTNA the, the league, and suddenly the consistent performances are not there. And I found myself asking the question, Mark. Maybe you can give me a better answer. Is do South African players struggle to play every three, four days? I mean, I know Sundowns is doing it, but the rest of everybody else, do they struggle to have as many games in ten days or something? I think what what is important in in this is is the mental aspect of of football. Mm -hmm. which is something that um, in South Africa we don't really, really take care of. Mm -hmm. um, we have clubs in South Africa that don't have sports psychologists in, in their clubs, you know, and um, in this part of, of, of what you're talking about, playing every game, uh, uh, every three days, every two days, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's mentally taxing and it needs special care, not only rest, but also special care when it comes to motivation of the players as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think also... The mentality that we have in South Africa towards some clubs, towards um, uh, um, the the CAF or, or the, the the Champions League or the Conference League, is not so like Sundowns. You know mm. what I mean? And they take it serious. They want to win it. They playing to win it. And also sometimes you hear from some coaches how they speak about these games as well. And if your coach speaks like that and speak negatively about Care football, and then already you as a player, you have lost that game was already. Mm. You have all lost that battle already. So I think the mentality when it comes to 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 this kind of football not doesn't start doesn't only start with the players, but it starts with the the hierarchy of the club. It starts with the coach of the club and the ambition of the club, the ambition of the of the coach. And um, if the the coach is 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 heading to a a, a, a situation whereby. They are working to to win and and also helping the players also to to be able to play every three days. I mm -hmm. think um, that's that's the first step that you also need to take when it comes to it. Uh, it. It doesn't only start with the players. As much as the players are the ones that are playing. No, the reason why I ask that is because do you feel that sometimes clubs within the PSL or the DST Premiership let themselves down by it's not necessarily beating Mamluk Sanos, for example. If you're trying to catch Mamluk Sanos, it's about how you play against the rest. And where you find the Sundowns were able to win eight games in a row, other teams are not able to put a run of three, four games in a row. And is that where they, the consistency is not there? You must remember, Sheikhs, um, if a club plays Sundowns tomorrow and they beat Sundowns, that doesn't mean that they are in Sundowns level. You mm -hmm. know, there's, there's so much work that is done um, by Sundowns. There's so much processes that are being followed. Um, um, there is so much work, as I said, um, for for other clubs for them to catch up with Sundowns. I'm not yeah. talking about from a a, re a results point of view, but I, I'm talking about also a a structural point of view. The kind of football that is played, the kind of coaches that they have. Um, the the also when you look into their development a little bit more, how they are playing now. You can you can see that also the DDC now is playing like the first team now. You can mm -hmm. see also the younger under 19s and under 17s are also trying now to to move in a direction whereby they have the same game model or the way same style mm -hmm. of play as well. So the, this also needs a lot of work. You know, this also needs a lot of work. And also now it helps players like Mabena, it helps players like 
um, cashiers, you know, to when they go to the first team, they go there and um, they, they it doesn't take long for them to to adjust because the playing style is the same as well. So well, I hope the other clubs are listening in terms of having to take it seriously. And one thing that you said that Mamelu Sundowns have done is invest. They've invested in the head coach, Rolando Mokwena. I mean, since he was a youth head coach and he went to Orlando Fires, he came back eventually. I'm asking myself, already he's won a league title. Already he's gone on this unbeaten run of 32 league games, not being able to get beat in the CAF Champions League as well. Um, he took his club to the semifinals. They're playing a brand of football that is great. How long do we have until we say... Bradley Carnell is in the U.S., Benny McCarthy is in England, Peter's in the UAE. How long do we go till we say, Rulani, maybe he has to go overseas eventually? Well, of course, um, it would be a huge step for him. And I think it will, it will be a step that I'm sure he will also want to take, you know, especially if um, the project is the right project for him. Mm -hmm. um, it's a project that also will allow him to grow. You know, he has done great work with Sundowns and um, they have created a structure also in the first team um, that is um, helpful and also a structure that is for success, I believe. And these are people of um, processes, um, people like uh, Michael Lofman and also they still have Coach Mnoba with his experience mm -hmm. as well. You know, so I would love to believe that Turulani would want to, to take up such an opportunity for for himself as well and it, i think it will be good for him it will be great for 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 him and even other coaches to take up that step as well um and you know i think that will help the the, the football of south africa because also when you look at um england uh, for an example they have all the best coaches in england mm -hmm. um coaching it and because they know um, what it means to have these people in your in your in your in your structures as well. So yeah. I think also it's something that here in South Africa we should honestly look into um, stamping a, a lot when it comes to to coaching and and taking it um, a little bit serious and um, investing in 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 coaching, investing in young coaches, not only for PSL but also for national teams and youth national teams as well. From this conversation, I'm changing my view on football already, so we need more people like you as well, if I could say. <laughs> One thing with the guys on the pitch, uh, there's a club, it's called Keza Chiefs. I mean, in your playing days, you would know it full well already. They were winning so many trophies for long. Like, it was... That's that's why, I mean, they were, they were, the, they were the club team. They won, I mean, the, the cup team. And now all of a sudden they've gone eight years without winning a single trophy. And they only have the Netbrain Cup to play for, and as well as the Culling Cup. And I would don't think the league is necessarily something they should win. But what has happened to this club that has gone so long with now like not winning anything? What what do you think went wrong? I cannot really pinpoint um what exactly happened. Mm. Um but I think also one of one thing maybe that I can probably point out in this moment, maybe it's not a problem, you know, but mm. maybe part of it as well. But also the, the kind of, when you look at the coaches that came um, from coach Stuart Baxter to Steve Compella to Kevin Solina Hunt. to Kevin Hunt mm. to Ernst mm. to Arthur. Mm. Now, um, uh, Coast TV. and when you look at it, maybe three, four playing styles, um, uh, not the same game play mm. uh, model, you know. So also maybe something like that brings some level of confusion when it comes to 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 to. When you look at Barcelona, for an example, it doesn't matter. The coach, but the the playing style, mm. the game model doesn't change, you know. And also, when they look for a, a, a coach, they look for a coach that suits how they want to play. Mm. Um, I remember before Barcelona signed Pep, they wanted Mourinho, you know, and Mourinho was one of the leading coaches to take up after Frank Reichardt, I think. Yeah, Frank Reichardt. Uh, yeah. But but the concern was with Mourinho was the playing style mm. and um 
and that's the only reason that Mourinho couldn't coach Barcelona at that time was because of the playing style, because they know um, what kind of football that they want to play. Maybe it's something that also a, a big club like Chiefs can look into and say, um, let's find someone that will bring, um, hopefully that someone is Coach Segi at this moment, you know, that will bring or that brings the, the what they want in terms of how they want to play. No, you're definitely right. And when you speak about culture and you speak about the fact that philosophy and the way it's supposed to go, I want to talk about the South African philosophy. And I'm asking myself, players like Mark Meinbel, players like Jabu Kule, players like Skarango Vese, players like Junior Kanye, you probably would say, maybe even Dr. Kumalo, players that were naturally gifted when you spoke about South African flair. Are they a dying breed, according to you? What do you think? It they shouldn't it shouldn't be like that, mm. to to be quite honest, because um the society um influences the the playing style and society is the people, what do they love, what do they want to see, and the players that we have by by nature. Um, what kind of players do we do we have by nature? Mm. We have Japanese, we have Magmayambelas, we have um Taborajales, we have now yes. the young boys from, from Pirates, we have Mshishis, we have <laughs> your Pesitaus, your Michalis, your Yeah. And then this now influences us already to say what kind of players should we have. When you look at defenders, for an example, you have your all John Marizella, you had um Lucas Hadebe, your, you know, Lucas Hadebe. What kind of players are these players? Are, are defenders that are comfortable on the ball that can play from the back? You know, you had your Robin Johannes, you had a lot of a lot of um players that came about Siabong as well. Mm. You know, still you can you can see now also with Sundowns, you still have Abu Abu Musa, Abu, 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 Abu Grant, Kekana, defenders that can play from the back. Mm. So now also that influences us, Ruti, what kind of football can we play? You know, you have about Rowan um, that can play from the back. You have about Velimoto that can play from the back. Abu Kune used to be used to play from the back. The late Senzo Meiwa used to play from the back. So we have goalkeepers now that naturally they, they have this um, natural uh, uh, um, talent to, to, to do these things. You know what I mean? So already... Mm. This influences us. Which in wide areas, we have these skillful players, 1v1 situation. Um, you know, we have in midfield, you have your Shuz Moshe, you have your Tiko mm. Modise, you have your Papi Zotwane, you have your Mshishis, you have your Tompo Kekane. It influences us. It influences us. Already. So we don't have to look far mm. um, for us to understand what, what kind of philosophy that you need to have. We just look, have to look at the the, the players that we have and these players now determines um this 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 so-called philosophy when you but what's key now for us is how do we do we do we do we do we influence or even implement uh this this philosophy that 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 we have you know how do we um coach it how do we instill it how do we imprint it how do we help the players to understand the good okay now Mark, uh, we know that you have your skill, but we don't want you to and, mm. and not help us. But now let's use your skill to eliminate um, um players. Now let's let's create one v one situations outside in, in wide areas for you to to use your skill for you to eliminate. But also let's help you with your decision making after you have eliminated this mm. player to say. What do I do with the ball now when I have eliminated this defender? Because sometimes some players will eliminate a defender and wait for him to come back again, for him to try <laughs> level him again. So now we we create an environment whereby decision making is a little bit better for our players as well and what mm -hmm. to do in those. For me, one thing that, or one of many things that I would love for 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 South Africa to have or to maybe invest in is is sports psychology or psychology mm -hmm. as a whole, you know. So because also these young men, they come from um societies that are really, really broken, if we can put it like that. Um yeah. societies that lacks role models, societies that um have absent absent fathers and absent mm -hmm. mothers or 
drunken drunks and all of these family problems, this and that, like myself, you know. So I think if also we can invest in that, because sometimes um, I know it's, it's it's a general thing that always happens is that when a player does something wrong and then they say, yeah, but Ali will have fun. But we don't understand the core of, of the problem. We don't understand what this boy, maybe um, he was abused when he was young. We don't know what maybe this boy um, grew up with Ubaba. Because also you must remember our immediate role models, our fathers. If the father is not there, your immediate role model is your brother. So if your father drinks and doesn't care and is, is, is a low life, sorry to say that, um, yeah. how will you maybe to an extent think that maybe this is the... The, the the life you know yes that is so deep man i yes i almost got emotional a little bit because sometimes we judge these players so quickly not knowing like the situation and the stories that they have you speak about support of family and growing up and all that i have to ask this before i have to go the last question that i have is how proud are you of michali mambela who is on the verge <laughs> of taking part in the afcon and is already taking part in europe how proud must you be? I'm, I'm, I'm proud of him, you know. Uh, he, he, he has done so much and he has worked so hard for him to, to get into or to get this opportunity. Mm. I think, I mean, I, as, as his brother, you know, I, I am someone that to always look up or maybe look after his emotion. And sometimes when he's, when he was also, we speak about um, the national team and I will say to him, I don't, don't know how about this national team thing, man. These people are doing this and this and this and that. Because me, I wanted to protect his emotion so that I'm a Philippe had. Candy and uh, deep down, he was saying, ah, this guy is crazy. I mean, I, I want this thing, you know, I want this dream. And, you know, and I remember when, when it first happened, you know, he was... Yo, he was he was really really happy to 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 be part of the national team to represent yeah. his country. I think um he's he's one person that is passionate about football more than I did when I was a player. Um, he has invested him a lot in himself. He does not drink. He does not smoke. He doesn't have tattoos. Um, he has he pays for his own sports psychologist. He pays mm-hmm. for his own conditioning coach. He has and he you know so. He's someone that also invests in himself um, as a human being and as a footballer as well. And and sometimes, you know, he will send me a message at 5 a.m. You know, he's at the gym. I mean, I see the message at 8 because Kanang Vuga, you know. So he he he's someone that invests and, in, you know, I'm not going to say maybe he deserves, but he has worked hard for, for this opportunity and he has done well, also when when he was given a, a a a start or coming in as a sub, I think also it shows um the effort that he puts in uh, that um he 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 appreciate the fact that he's he's in this, you know. Also, it came at the at the right time in his life. Of of course, he's a little bit matured, um, turning 20, 10 to twenty seven this year, mm-hmm. and also he's also is doing well as well, uh, playing the Europa um cup as well. So. Um, I think also the everything that is happening in his life was also aligned by the heavens as well, you know. Mm-hmm. Um is, everything is coming together at the same time. I think um, you know, I'm I'm really proud of him. I'm really proud of of the man that he is. No, nah, man, that's that's ma- massive. And and please tell him that he's also a, a captain and senior player at Bafana. We need him to <laughs> performing well at FCON as well. Mark. Man, thank you so much for being a guest. I have so much respect for players like you, who the way they played the game, um, the level of respect you showed it, even speaking to you now, just how much you're showing it respect in coaching. I'm now going to be a little bit less critical of players that are upcoming, you know, because sometimes you want them to boom so much, but you don't know what they're going through. So I want to say thank you for coming on the show, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much, now, all the best with the coaching, man. Hopefully, one day we we'll see you as a head coach in the DST Premiership. I will be a better coach than I was as a player. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Keep well, yeah? Yeah, my brother. Thank you so much, Chega. Who was up to par and who became our star? But also, who fell short in this game we all love? 
Let's find out on Muhu of the Week. Star of the Week goes to a player that is going about his business in a silent way. Sokhvat Mabasa of Morocco Swallows already got six goals in eight games. He's on fire. But I see you. I see you. The Muhu of the Week, it's obvious. Orlando Pirates Football Club. <laughs> exiting the champions league that early guys i mean this they remind me of like this pit bull that looks so scary né? but when it opens its mouth there's no teeth <coughs> can't bite but no to say it's a fella that's it those are my muhus of the week it's time for bet of the week get ready to win big by placing the right bets on the right games the uefa champions league is back and of course i had to add it on my bet slip Antwerp going against Shakhtar. I've gone with over 1.5 goals. Dortmund are going, going up against AC Milan. I've gone with Dortmund or draw and over 1.5 goals. Porto at home against Barcelona, over 2.5 goals. Newcastle versus PSG. Mm. I've gone with Newcastle or draw against PSG. Yeah. Red Bull Leipzig against Manchester City. I've gone with over 2.5 goals. The odds, 8.67. That's eight times my money back. The most I can win is 2,800 rands. If you want to win with me, click on the link below. Remember to practice responsible betting at betway.co.za. We've come to the end of the show. Now, before we all go watch Cape Town City versus Kaiser Chiefs, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified for future episodes. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. We believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. We believe. I believe. Believe in the box with a risk-free bet, and if they lose, we'll refund you in cash. Betway, official Springbok sponsors.